We know the truth about these satanic record labels and the rituals they do. But now we're going to break down the record labels and the private prisons. This is the dark side of the music industry. The birth of hip-hop is believed to date back to August 11th, 1973, where DJ Cool Herc, real name Clive Campbell, and his friend hosted a back-to-school party in Bronx, New York. 18-year-old Herc and his friend Coke LaRock are often referred to as the fathers of hip-hop. Hip-hop rose to fame around the same time block parties started to become popular in the Bronx. The genre incorporated other elements of the culture, including DJing, turntables, scratching, and beatboxing. At the block parties, DJs would play percussion tracks and samples as the crowd danced. Eventually, this led to people rapping over these instrumentals. Hip-hop music was not officially recorded for play on radio or television until 1979, largely due to poverty during the genre's birth and lack of acceptance outside the urban community. A mysterious man left an interesting letter on a hip-hop blog titled, The Meeting That Changed Hip-Hop. The man claimed to be a former employee of a major record label. His letter exposed the record labels investing into private prisons and them subsequently promoting criminal activity to fill up the prisons and their pockets. This mystery man came from Europe in the 80s and quickly established himself in the music business. Early 1991, he was invited to a meeting with a friend at a private residence on the outskirts of LA. There was 20 to 30 people there, some he recognized and a few that he didn't. They were there to discuss the future of music the future of the music industry. At the meeting, there was this small group of unfamiliar men who seemed to be isolated amongst themselves. The writer points out that these men seemed different and they were clearly not from the music industry. Everyone was talking with each other amongst themselves, waiting for the, me the meeting to begin. They were interrupted and asked to sign an NDA before they continued an NDA is a non-disclosure agreement, meaning that they cannot tell anyone about the meeting or what is discussed. This caused some of the people to leave, which they did without issue. The others stayed there and signed the NDA out of curiosity, but it made them ask each other, what could this meeting be about that's so serious? One of the men from the unfamiliar group stood up and collected the NDA papers before giving the floor to the main speaker, the host, who only introduced himself by first name. The host began the meeting by praising everyone for their success in the music industry. He then congratulated them for being selected to become decision makers. The mystery writer makes it clear at this point in the meeting he felt off. There was something strange about this meeting something devious. The subject quickly shifted as he told everyone their respective companies had invested in a very profitable industry, which could become even more rewarding with their active involvement. He went on to explain the record labels everyone worked for there had invested millions of dollars into building privately owned prisons. Their positions of influence in the music industry would actually impact the profitability of these investments. Everyone in the room began looking at each other in confusion. It was 1991, so most people had not heard of a privately owned prison. Even more, they were confused as to how music 
and their positions in the industry what it had to do with a private prison. The host began to elaborate further. He told him that these prisons were built by privately owned companies who received funding from the government based on the number of inmates that they held, meaning the more inmates they have, the more money they make. Since the prisons are privately owned, when they would become publicly traded, they could buy shares and profit also. The host can see the confusion in the group after saying so, so he begins to make the connection even more clear. He said since their employers became silent investors in the prison business, it was now the record label's best interest to keep the prisons full. Their job as decision makers in the music industry is to market music which promotes criminal behavior, rap music being the main choice. Also, since they are employees, they could buy personal stocks in the prisons. These statements caused a shocked silence to consume the room. They were stunned. Even more, they were confused as of to what they were actually hearing. The silence in the room was broken when one of the men yelled, Are you effing serious? Quickly, two of the unfamiliar men sprang into action and snatched up the man who yelled, and they attempted to escort him out of the building. A few others got involved to break it up, including the mysterious writer, so all four of them were promptly escorted off the premises. As they were leaving, the man warned them one last time, Remember, you signed an NDA. Nominated rapper Nipsey Hussle shot and killed shot and killed Chicago rapper King Von. Mission named Mo3 was approached by the killer on I-35. Incoming rapper is shot dead. 20-year-old XXX Temptation. Young Dolph is dead after a shooting in his hometown of Memphis. Modern rap music is targeted towards every negative aspect of the culture, whether that be drugs, violence, gangs, and promotion of the occult. Every music video has guns, lean, and every song contains lyrics about murder. Drill music has contributed to hundreds of deaths through gang violence in Chicago alone. They make songs disrespecting the dead, bragging about how they murdered rival gang members. They even go as far as desecrating the graves of rivals and taunting the victim's family through music videos. These rappers had the power to influence generations with their music and this is what they choose to promote. The youth has been corrupted, taught to glorify gang culture, selling drugs, and murder. The music industry targets women also. They use people like Meg Thee Stallion and Cardi B to promote sexual wickedness to the next generation of women. They are taught to sexualize themselves, be unfaithful, and they are taught to be the exact opposite of what a woman is. TikTok had these young girls dancing and singing to this demonic WAP song. And then in the middle of the spectrum, we have Little Nas X, who is there to promote the TG agenda to the next generation, with album covers showing him as pregnant and demonic music videos to captivate the masses and influence their feeble minds. This is modern music, and this is the effect that it has. Indictment involving rappers Young Thug and Gunna. YFN Lucci is the big name here. Daniel Hernandez, better known as 6ix9ine, started his rap career in 2014. Before the fame, he was seen in the No Jumper vlogs by Adam22. 6ix9ine wouldn't get his big break for three years until 2017 with his song Gummo, which turned out to be a dream come true for the gang task force. Desperate to keep his fame, 6ix9ine knew he had to partake in the antics of hip hop, which means trolling and having beef with other rappers. This also served a darker, more sinister role of documenting the criminal activity of the blood gang on social media. Using the Gummo video, the gang unit was able to identify most of the nine Trey Blood gang members. 
they would sit back and build a RICO case against them. 6 9 was an inside man working with them all along. He posted the videos of him putting hits on other rappers, ordering shootings of others, fighting, threats, and other criminal activity. November 20th, 2018, 6 9 was among six people charged in a federal grand jury indictment containing racketeering and firearm charges. Luckily for Daniel, he had been an informant all along, so he could basically escape without a scratch. Somewhere between 2014 and 2017, Daniel had to be approached by someone from the music industry that had ties to the CIA or the gang task force to plant him there. They used Daniel to collect information while making his dream of becoming a rapper come true. 6 9 was no doubt an industry plant. He promoted gangs, gun violence, drugs, and all other criminal activity. He promoted the agenda that he was told to. He did so all along while coexisting with real gang members while being an informant and portraying the street image. After returning home, under just two years later, 6 9 immediately rose back up to fame and continued his antics. He even did a few uh, interviews mocking one of the gang members that he got arrested because he asked him for help to take care of his children. They sent this man into the urban community as an informant. They planted him into the music industry to promote criminal activity. He put several people behind bars and then bragged about it and taunted them when they asked for help. That secret meeting is starting to sound more and more real with every story. 6 9 is the definition of a culture vulture, and the worst kind at that. But, he even has a new gang, a new group of young men that are gang members who travel with him and the police. These young men are in for a rude awakening. Every ancient tribe incorporated drums into rituals. Mainly, they were used to conjure or worship spirits while dancing around the fire as praise. A book written in 1812 by the Grimm brothers was a children's tale about the Pied Piper. Dr. Emoto's water study proved that your thoughts and words and energy can influence water. Positive words and frequencies make the water form beautiful crystal structures when frozen. Negative words has the opposite effect, which distorts the water and destroys the geometric shapes. The human body consists of 60% water. Music affects and alters your frequency and the human energy field. Why does it seem that so many rappers go to jail back to back to back when they have millions of dollars and have no reason to be committing crimes? How do they get out of these life sentences they are facing? Simple, they are part of the system. It's all about follow the leader. If you're easily influenced and your idol is going to jail over and over, it's the same as if your family member was going to jail repeatedly. It influences you. Their idol went to jail, so it's cool, right? It's no big deal, right? I think these rappers are sometimes taken to an MK Ultra facility when they act up. Some of them are given warnings by the label when they're sent to jail, like, if you don't follow the script, this is what we can do to you. They allowed him to get away with everything, why they are the cash cow. But when they start to fall off or go against the grain, they are sent to jail and arrested on RICO charges. That's because the whole time they have the police, the gang units, building cases on them just waiting for him to act up. The hip hop agenda is to promote gang violence, promote murder, to depopulate the urban communities and populate the prisons to increase profit margins. It's all a sick loop. They teach the women to sleep around and never, never settle down. This creates financial hardships on the single mothers who are forced to become dependent on the government or work so hard that their influence on their children is greatly reduced. 
you need to think twice before allowing your children or even yourself to consume this type of music and be programmed and be brainwashed, taught to idolize man and woman over God. This music brings nothing but death, destruction, and pure evil.